Good morning, everyone. How are you all doing today? Ooh, I'm sure you can see from the title here that yes, we're going there, you guys, for another eyebrow-raising decision for a Let's Play. I know, I know, I know, but I'll save my thoughts for just a moment. Let's watch this cutscene as it rolls. remains under occupation by an unidentified group of terrorists. Half an hour earlier, police stormed the building, but were forced back under heavy fire and sustained heavy casualties. Units 1, 3, and 4 withdraw to 40 meters from the side entrance of the building. If they keep attacking, pull back another 40 meters. Move only on my signal. Copy. Can you get through to the basement? Our communications for the basement of the Togusa building in Sector 8 are being jammed by radio signal. Units 1 and 2 have been out of contact for the last 5 minutes. I see. Well, they're on their own now. It's me. Alex! You the only one left? I don't know. I'm the only one who made it from our unit. <laughs> to survive, huh? You deserve a reward for that. And here it comes. <laughs> Michelle! I'm sure they wish they hadn't survived after having to be a part of this game, but we will save those thoughts and projections for later. Anyway, let me quickly hop into this menu here. You guys already know I love tinkering with my options, hate the vibration, at least when it comes to the game controller, AO, but okay. <laughs> Welcome, you guys. As you can see, we are going to be undertaking TRAG, Tactical Rescue Assault Group. I don't know why the U.S. decided to be so extra and give this game this type of name. In Japan and the EU, I'm 99% sure it was just marked as Hard Edge. So, you know, I wasn't behind the whole naming process, so it is what it is. But yes, friends, this will be our next experience together. I know I had mentioned right before the cutscene started that this game is one that definitely raises some eyebrows. It's, it's known within the retro gaming community as being I wouldn't say it's completely garbage, but it's it's a title that, you know, I think you either absolutely hate it or you just enjoy your memories and the whole nostalgia factor. Um, and that's kind of, I guess, all I really have in terms of a positive spin to put on it. Well, that's not entirely true. One other positive thing is that the music in this game actually is pretty jamming and pretty banging. So I think there will be some good takeaways from this, but I like to always start out with complete and total transparency that this might not be up everyone's alley, and that's okay. Sometimes it is appropriate to just laugh at how bad a form of media is and just try to get through it and enjoy the experience together. So that's kind of my expectation for this. I guess in terms of what you can expect from me, I have played this before. Obviously, I have a little bit of cheeky commentary that I've already inserted into the five-ish minutes that we've been here together so far in the episode. I did play this when it initially came out in the late 90s. I think we got our copy 
it was like right towards the end of 1999, around Christmas time. So, and I, I mean, I don't know if this came out summer of 99 or what, but either way, I do remember we got this around the holidays of 1999. I played through it uh, that following year, and I've probably played through the whole game a total of two, maybe three times in my entire life, but it's been a good decade and some change. So I wouldn't say this is technically semi-blind because I do know the overarching story like I remember a few of the boss fights I remember the names of all the characters and some general mechanics but I do not remember all the details I don't even really remember the controls so the first few few minutes are gonna be kind of rough so just bear with me but I guess I would say that semi-blind is probably the most appropriate tag to attribute to this undertaking I know quite a few things about the game but definitely not a lot this is not a walkthrough this is as vague of a playthrough as you're going to get with a lot of bumbling and stumbling around but I feel like it matches the the atmosphere of the game itself and kind of everything that surrounded its release like this game if I recall correctly, it even had a spread in one of the PlayStation magazines that we were subscribed to as kiddos, and everyone just dragged it. It was it was rough. So if you've never heard of Trag or Hard Edge, whichever title you want to attribute to it, welcome. You are in for a ride, let me tell you. But for those of you who are a little bit more well-versed in it, maybe your experience is more like mine, where you played it the year it came out or a year or two after, so you have some memories of it like maybe not a lot of detail but quite a bit then you, you kind of know what we're going to be getting ourselves into but either way welcome aboard my name is rabbit i hope you enjoy what we will be experiencing together because yeah i f i feel like glutton for punishment doesn't even begin to describe my mentality hence why we're here and it does play a little bit differently you know very resident evil like so yeah Lots of good to be had here. So last two things I'm going to say before we dive right in. You guys already know that in general, because I know some people do watch these things blind and technically I'm playing this semi-blind since I don't remember everything enough to construct a walkthrough for this for sure. I will hold comments at least to the extent that I won't allow them to just publish live until a couple days after episodes have rolled out just so that someone doesn't come to the page while an LP is ongoing or while one of my my playthroughs is ongoing and see a bunch of spoilers in the comments like I understand some people don't mean to spoil but I just like to throw that out there because I always have one or two people that they'll post the same comment like 10 times and then they'll private message me and say like my comments aren't posting and this is why if it's been two or three days since the video went up and you're not seeing it it probably contained a spoiler and I didn't authorize it to go live but it's not deleted I read it and more than likely I'll respond to you but just give it some time for other people to kind of get caught up since this LP is still fresh and active and rolling out in real time. Last plug I always like to throw out there, as you guys know, content creation does take time, and especially when you're getting high quality gaming experiences like with Trag, uh, uh, no, bad joke is bad, but the point still remains. If you would like to support Rabbit Plays Games as a channel in any capacity, I do have a Patreon that you can go and you know, become a patron at. Even just $1 a month makes a difference. And I also have a PayPal slash and or a coffee account set up so you could do a one-time donation too of like $5 if you feel like you want to actually sponsor this playthrough. And you're always welcome to do it when a game is done and it's rolled out. So whatever works for you works for me. You just watching and commenting and laughing along with me as we journey through this is more than enough. But I like to still put out that plug. So links to everything, the Patreon, the PayPal, the coffee, everything is down in the subscription box below. So with those two plugs out of the way, our introduction to the game out of the way, and I think I've got options set up as I'd like. Vibration is off, sound is stereo, voices are on. Speaking of voices, don't worry, Michelle does not sound that annoying throughout the game. For whatever reason, her voice actress was changed from that little opening cinematic to actual gameplay. So I don't know who made that choice, but I'm glad they switched it because opening cutscene Michelle needs some brain cells and to maybe do some squats. I would highly recommend it for her. Anyway, I don't think we need to see this again. I'm pretty sure it's going to be the same cutscene, but let me just see. Yeah, it is. We're going to skip this 
And then there should be, here we go, like a sub cut scene for us after the explosion. Michelle, look. Where are we? Inside the Togusa building. Seems we're the only ones who made it here from the basement. I'll make them pay for what they did to our people. Our first priority is rescuing Professor Howard, not revenge, Michelle. Tell her, Alex. Yeah, I know. The SOS signal from the professor came from the 26th floor of this building. Let's see if we can get up there. You got it. Let's give it a whirl. And as I shared with you guys, mechanics, I don't completely remember. So I do know I can switch ammo. I think I can shoot. Okay, pretty easy. Oh god, this might be a waste to be using ammunition. One other cool thing is that you can you can see the floors to keep track. I also, I'm pretty sure there's a menu where you can swap out your characters. This game, it loves to spoil ya, because there will be some other recruits, but we'll, we'll not dwell on that quite yet. So I can play as Michelle right now. One other thing I recall from this game, that for those of you who've also played, whether you've completed it or not, you know that, or maybe you don't know that, but I guess I'll share, that there will be opportunities where characters will split and you actually have to kind of rotate through them in order to advance the story and advance gameplay. So I think that's kind of cool that they did that. Just to throw out some positives, since we can't completely dog on this game without acknowledging that they had a, a couple good ideas in mind. So we've got the high frequency blade equipped for Michelle. Options should just be the same ones we saw on the home menu. And Alex, M727ST Custom. Alex's personal gun. Well, keep it to yourself, Alex. I think that's it. Nobody should have any keys. I think all items are shared across the board. It does look like that is the case. But let's start out with baby girl Michelle and just, just see what we can figure out here. I think she'll be easier for me to use for a bit until I can figure out how to aim. Okay, so we can combo. You can spin around. You actually kind of have to. You can't just, you know, use your D-pad to move in a specific direction. She'll walk backwards. She'll walk sideways. Yeah, that's always been weird to me, but I see why some people might prefer this. Oh my gosh, Michelle, what are you doing? And can you move from this stance? I don't know if she can. Well, it looks like she actually can. How do I run? I guess that was my run. Y'all, I don't even know. Okay. We're just gonna, we're gonna keep it moving. And how do I inspect? I can't leave now. So we came in through this door. So we can take this, maybe? Oh my god, y'all. What am I getting all of us into? This perspective is going to destroy me. So let's just take the door and see. Oh, where are we? Okay. So that red door was the entry way after Alex and Michelle, I guess, had jumped over that little ledge. I think that's what we're looking at. So I could have taken that other path too. Oh my God, y'all. This is, oh, bringing back the Jade Cocoon story of the Tamamayu control scheme. That was very hard for me. So an exhaust duct. Great, Michelle. Do you want a cookie for identifying this? I don't know what the point of that was. So there are the emergency stairs beyond this point. What does that matter? But I still have time. It'll be best to see what's in the lobby first. Oh, so I'm not supposed to be over here. Okay, there should be another door over here. It has a special lock on it. Okay, so I can't do anything over here. I guess I ran this way for absolutely nothing. Let's go back. I know a lot of people that like this sort of gameplay perspective where I guess some people feel like it controls a little more realistically, maybe? So this fan seems abnormally large for the conditioning of this building. Okay, interesting. But I know for me, as a JRPG fiend, I've never been super into how Resident Evil kind of controls. And I guess this style in general, I don't know if there's a description or a term for it. But anyway, what's this? I've never seen this kind of machine in an office building before. 
Well, your guess is as good as mine, sweet cheeks. Your guess is as good as mine. So I guess this is the door I have to take. We tried every other option and it genuinely did not let us move forward. So let's head upstairs to the lobby or downstairs to the lobby. I think we're in the basement, right? Oh my goodness. Prepare for the jams, y'all. Prepare for the jams and the trolling, I guess. Oh, monsters. Can we do this without me getting totally? Get wrecked, son. Or maybe I'm the one getting wrecked. And I think there was a way for me to defend, right? Ooh, I see a health pack. No. Okay, we did get one. Please give me another. Or life up. Was that just a way to heal? Or did I actually get a healing item? We did not. I think we always had six first aid tubes and we always had two of the blue EX bottles. So kind of weird. I don't know if that was just meant to do like an auto heal sort of sitch, but okay, no music. So I guess we're, we're good to go. Let's do some exploring. Dora, where are you at? Okay, so there are pay phones, but the lines have been cut. Oh man. Bringing back the old days before the cell phones. Ah. Or at least before the ones that weren't gigantic. Who's with me? Who calls those days? Oh, okay, Michelle, please slow down. I guess you can double tap and she does like a little a little leap. Okay, I see you, Michelle. I see you. Let's go in here and see. I do recall there's a lot of shit you can always be looking at and kind of inspecting, and sometimes the game will even reward you for backtracking and re-examining things. So keep that in mind. If you're playing this alongside me blindly or semi-blindly, try to check things out whenever you get the chance to. So okay, we found a blue EX bottle. I'll take it. It looks like there's a laptop or some little doohickey here. Almost all the doors in the lobby are locked, but the one leading to the emergency stairs should be all right. Okay, 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 I don't need to read all this again, Michelle. Can you just keep it moving, girlfriend? And I wonder if I actually switched to Alex. Okay, I am just trying to see what else is there. Would be nice if you could control how quickly text scrolled, but you know, it's not always, not always possible. But I'm gonna check out everything here before we move anywhere else. So she says, they're locked. I'll be better off looking elsewhere. Is that another door? I guess it is actually another door, so we'll have to keep this in mind. We are in the front lobby. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness gracious. And I don't know if I can scroll through. So we'll just go ahead and exit for now. Keep on checking things out. There shouldn't be anything else here at the console. But does it not look like we should be able to do something with this green doohickey? Whatever this is supposed to... <gasps> oh, it's an actual save point. Okay. There we go. Let's let's just save our data. We just started, kind of fresh and new, but you never know. Ah, seven minutes and 58 seconds. It's a nice little start there. But this is a pretty fancy building, if I do say so. Michelle, which way do we want to go, though? That's the question. I guess we can run down this way. It doesn't look like there's another door that we can really mess with, but there should be stuff for us to at least look at. See if we can find some clues. I do remember as a kiddo playing this, oh, I can't actually even go down here. So, that's a little misleading, thanks game. I can't leave yet, I have to finish the mission. Oh, is that what takes us out of here? I'm guessing that's what was just implied. But yes, yeah, so for me, this perspective change, I like it, but at the same time, it's like, oh my God, where are we going, have I already looked at this? Please, girlfriend, just check the door. So they're locked. I'll be better off looking elsewhere. They're really not gonna let me go anywhere, are they? There should be another one over here, right? So this one is also locked and she is similarly expressing that she'll be better off looking elsewhere. So I guess there's nothing to see in this room. Why did I come in here then, just to kill monsters? I guess we might be able to look at the portrait over here or the painting, so a picture. All right, looks like nothing really to see or do. Why don't we try the elevator? Did we already look at this? I don't think we did. Let's give it a whirl. Looks like the elevator's working. That or the emergency stairs at the back are the only ways up. I'll bet there's a trap in one of them. Yeah, let's split up for now. 
So, we have the choice of who will be going to the elevator or will be going via the elevator. I don't know if it really makes a difference. I, I'm just gonna stick with Michelle, but this is coming back to what I had mentioned a few minutes ago that actually to progress through the story, your characters will split up at various points and you'll have to kind of oscillate between two or among three or four of them in order to make sure that you're finding all the tools and the trinkets and gadgets you'll need to open up new areas and access points. So I always thought that was kind of cool that it forces you to grow accustomed to switching it up a little bit. I don't know. Keeps things fresh, right? So we'll just go with Michelle. We're already using her. I'll take the stairs. You take the elevator. Any problems, I'll be on the radio. Be careful. Save the well wishes for yourself, Alex. I got this. But yes, there we go. So, the division begins. We'll see where this leads. I honestly don't remember what this next floor looks like. I did remember that first one. But, oh God, we'll see. Like I said, it's been over 10 years since I've last played this. Kind of a funny story. I had a copy of this game. Like I said, we had gotten this holiday season of 1999. And a few years later, my brother and I had just made the decision to trade it. We didn't super love the game. Oh, but listen, listen to this music, you guys. Hold on. I gotta put my own music or my own story on pause for this. Totally jamming. That is so sweet. But yeah, so I had, we had traded this a few years after we had acquired a copy. And my sister is a few years younger than I am. And, you know, I was several years younger than my brother. Oh, and there's another one of those little save points. Very cool. But she had noticed a couple years later that we didn't have this game anymore. And I don't know why she thought I absolutely loved this game because I used to always roast it as a kiddo myself. But she had bought me another copy and that's the version that I have today is the one that she actually purchased for me. So not the original one that we had gotten for the holidays. But anyway, you guys, we will go ahead and end with that little note there. So thanks, Bear. I appreciate you re-gifting me a game that I don't know if it was a gift in the form of a blessing or if it was kind of like a curse, like a white elephant sort of thing. But either way, at least we get to experience the lulls together, you guys. So thank you for watching. My name is Rabbit. This is going to be my semi, 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 semi blind run through Trag, AKA terribly repulsive action game. And yes, I greatly look forward to undertaking this with all of you in tow. So take care, be good, and I'll meet up with you in just a moment in episode number two, where we'll kind of keep on rocking as Michelle and then when we hit a dead end we'll switch to the homie Alex and see if there's something he can do to allow us to continue to move forward so I'll see you guys in just a moment <laughs>